Last season, the Philadelphia Eagles were literally one defensive stop away from a Super Bowl victory. The importance of veteran leadership. The battle cry. The rally guy. The rah-rah personality. The tough-minded Malcolm Jenkins, Brian Dawkins alpha type. I am really excited that the Philadelphia Eagles have added Kevin Bayard to the defensive secondary. A guy you know is going to be in the right spot. A guy you know is going to bring the passion, the energy, who's going to fit this city, being a native himself, so beautifully. So, when I heard that Howie Roseman had traded for Kevin Bayard, I didn't care that he hasn't been that productive on the 2023 season. I cared about the fit. I cared about the circumstances. I cared about the situational football. One stop, Super Bowl victory last season that was avoided. What's up, Cerebral Football fans? My name is Steven Heider. This is Gate City Sports Show. So I was really excited when I heard the uh, Chris Long episode of the Greenlight Podcast where he had, you know, former Tennessee Titans and Los Angeles Rams coach Jeff Fisher on his channel. And, like, you could see the pure excitement that got in Chris Long's voice when he found out the news from Pat McAfee that, listen, Kevin Bayard had just been traded to the Philadelphia Eagles. But Kevin Byer you know, just got traded. We, Holy shit, Coach. Kevin Byer. Yeah. And then when Coach started to speak about this guy, mind you, this is not someone that Jeff Fisher had coached himself. He's just in the city, so he knows the people inside the front office. He knows the people inside the locker room, the coaching group. So he knows about the player. He had a lot of favorable things to say about him. He, um, he's been great for, for this franchise. Uh, I mean, he's a local guy. And- I look at it. We're one play. One play. Can a guy come in here and provide the veteran leadership and the heartbeat to give you the one play that you might need on the back end of your defense? Situational football. I'm not expecting this guy to come in here and turn around life completely. I'm expecting this guy to where if the, per, if the opportunity is presented to us, can we capitalize on it? And that's what I think Kevin Bayard brings to the Philadelphia Eagles team. Now, I heard Q&A discuss this young man, and they talked about how since 2017, he has led the league in interceptions with 27. So, Kevin Byer, since 2017, has led the league in interceptions. However, I will say that for my personal liking, I don't like going as far back as 2017. I think you start to lose a little bit of the relevancy of that day. I think it's a little too far removed, but I got their point. However, he's still a good player because even if you take that number and you make it to 2020, so the last two to three seasons, kind of like how has things gone? This guy's still a top 10 player in terms of interceptions. He still finished inside of the top 10 of safeties. He's on this list with guys like Justin Simmons, Quandre Diggs, Tyron Matthew, Micah Fitzpatrick, Harrison Smith, Jordan Poyer, Jesse Bates the third, CJ GJ, who's kind of cheating, Tayshawn Gibson, Kevin Byard, and then you got guys behind Kevin Byard like Jordan Whitehead, Marcus Williams, Devin McCourty. He's been a dog, man. This guy is a dude that can go take the football away. I think when you add him and Reed together, you got guys that if you make a mistake with the football, they'll take it from you. That's what I like about this is that this is a guy who can line up athletically, who can line up physically with the better tight ends and the taller slot receivers of the league and provide you some adequate play from that position. I'm not trying to throw shade at Terrell Edmonds because I actually really like Terrell Edmonds. And I feel bad for a guy that was on a team that was probably competing for Super Bowl that gets kind of get shipped to a team remaking itself. But come on, man. I, I I know you can't re-legislate a game. Does anyone here think that Kevin Byard is getting split on that play with James Bradbury and getting beat for a touchdown? Maybe. It's still Tyree Kill, but I feel like we would have stood a better chance there as an example. Do I think Kevin Byard is still that 4 4 6 40 guy at, at 30 years old that put up a... Six seven three three cone and a 30-inch vertical during the combine? I mean, probably not, guys. I mean, from what you can do in your early 20s to when you begin your 30s, there, there's a downward trajectory. We all know that. With that said, it's not like he completely lost all of his athleticism. And at the end of the day, this is still a 5'11", 6'210", pound-plus safety that's got over 33 inches in the arm reach and can be disruptive with the football. That part of his game is not just going to completely disappear. I saw the criticism. I saw some of the tweets out there on Twitter where people were saying, like, have you guys watched, you know, this young man play on the 2023 season? Yeah, I have, actually, because I watch a lot of games. With that said, I also know that that Tennessee Titans secondary is very young, and they're out there playing guys like Roger McCreary, Caleb Far- Farley, who's still on the pup list, Elijah Molden, Brady Breezy, Anthony Kendall, 
you know, Trey Avery, Shaheem Carter, Matthew Jackson, Eric Garner, Tay Gowans on that team on their practice squad. Like, the only real veteran presence they have there is going to be Christian Fulton and then a guy like Sean Murphy bunting. Terrell Edmonds kind of adds to them having a little bit of experience in the secondary. So, I mean, yeah, he's dealing with guys with injuries. He's dealing with younger football players that over the last two, three years, you know, worth of draft cycles. As Coach said in this clip here. It's hard now for him doing so much in that defense because he's got so much, so many young guys that aren't. He's out know, there he's, trying to make adjustments for these guys. He's out there trying to get them aligned correctly. So when you bring him to a secondary that's not going to have guys such as Reed Battleship out there, Blank is going to be out there with him, to guys like, you know, James Bradbury and Darius Slay, 30-year-old you know guys themselves, Bradley Roby, another 30-year-old guy himself, you have that veteran core group of dudes that know where they're supposed to be. Yeah, I think that that might be a little bit of an outlier what we saw on the season, and I'm not as concerned about that as maybe some Cowboy fans are, to be quite honest. I actually really like what they have done, to be quite honest, in terms of mixing the veteran you know, players with the youth, and even you know, within the roster on the backup spots. You st- we still have guys on there like Kendall Vildor, who's on our practice squad, that doesn't get discussed enough, but he's a guy who's played a couple years with the Psy. So a veteran guy on the practice squad that if you had to call up, he could do the job for you. You know, then we got guys like Josiah Scott returning. Justin Evans will probably eventually come back off the IR and be able to factor in here. And we saw that they're talking to Kavon Wallace and potentially bringing Kavon back into the fold. All right, guys, as I sign off here, if you want to be rage engaged and you want to see a discussion about A.J. Brown and Terrell Owens, it's not. It's just praising A.J. Brown. But, hey, click this video right here, guys. All right, y'all, I appreciate y'all. And I'll see y'all in the next video.